One day, we woke up to a large number of swallows in Sardinia on their way somewhere further south, and I wondered how to translate swallows. It's called rising to swallows. <clears throat> and then we were lifted, waking late from snippets of dreams, from lips and deceases, chickens and cheeses, like a rabbit here, a cricket not there, that rises at last to its window song. We stirred to rickshaws and ratchets, wrinkles that fizzed or dissolved, their divings and swirlings, their sheer of loops over five lemon trees. Here for an instant we rose to the swarm, to the hundreds of how many feeding and gathering or tripping and up for the lick of it, their kinky cross-patched tweets in the last-minute schoolings of kids with twists whose crazy parabolas twitching for biscuits, had spun off the earth and were lost, each a toolbox of kickings. This was a backstory, cheerily ours, over globes that were Chechens of ripeness, yellow and green in this light, such stickets and lychees observed by a mishpok of rooks in the willows and pitchy pines. We were touched and keen for a state that could raise us to their cusp. Might the lich gate open, and we stand amongst them, quickened? We were holding hands, all girded and willing, while they were leaving, reaching, already flipped away from their quincunx, catches and visit. Midday August, on the brink of sleep, and the two sapling larches, six foot and decrepit in this heat, are barely leaning their roots loosed out to a desert breeze. Two adjacent, less like you and me, stronger, similar in stature, anchored in the cracks, divide an unscathed section of asphalt from the morning rawness, from the broccoli gone to yellow along the tracks. It is a local line and stopped without intent I know it, for a moment sinking to another moment, and five minutes longer for this half hour standstill. For turnip blossom you would not believe, spurge and tansy pushing through the siding reinforcements, then nothing. Then a one-time greenhouse in its unseen darkens. This is the disconnected decked with brittle plastic sheeting, and in the quasi-parting distance and the supermarket's tiling, a car's reflection flashes up like a memory of homing doves. But now we're moving out, observed by a hare in the wrecks of the maze, alert and delivered to a land that cannot respond. Graveyard by the sea. The doves float and red keels mottle the ink fretted waves. Over the roofs come straining sails and pilgrims file through the gate. Walking the wall, you light on the carcass of a dog. Your eye picks over its wasted hide and slides into bone thick sleep. The minutes flood with years, emptied by their sojourns in the rain. The pages crackle in the breeze.